Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. It's Tori and today, because it's almost the end of April, I decided to do a March wrap up. Now, in case you were unaware, I took a bit of a break through most of the end of March and the first half of April because I needed to just take a step back and just recenter a little bit. So that's why the March wrap up is late. So with no further ado, let's get into it. The first book that I read in March was Daughter of the Beast by E.C. Greaves. Now, this book is one of the 10 finalists in the self-published fantasy blog off. Our main character in this book is Zintail Fairwinter, and she is a halfling, and she is kidnapped from her sleepy little village by a barbaric pack of Volcari, which are basically giant, like, wolf hybrids, essentially. And she at first is a slave in their culture, and she is forced to um, take care of their leader, and she is forced to survive their incredibly visceral culture. And as we go along, she slowly becomes more and more part of the culture, and things ensue. I really liked the fresh take on fantasy, and you can definitely tell that the author is pulling a lot of influence from Slavic folklore. There's a ton of folklore vibes in this book. It is book one in a trilogy. For me, this one, overall, I had a, a good time with. I think some of the plot was a little bit jarring at times, and I did have a harder time getting fully emotionally immersed with the protagonist, which honestly, for me, tends to be a struggle when it comes to first-person narrative stories anyway, so I don't necessarily know that that's the fault of this particular book. Um, but I did have a harder time connecting with Zintail as a protagonist than I did with some of the side characters, and I was a little bit more invested in them, I think, throughout the story. Um, and the plot was definitely followed more of that kind of folk tale disjointedness that happens sometimes, which I think, again, is the choice of the structure of this particular story. Um, but overall, I enjoyed it, and I think that it'll be interesting once again to see which of these Spiffbo finalists comes up on top. The next book that I read in March was Harbinger of Justice by Andrew Watson, who is a fellow indie author and booktuber here on the old YouTube. And this is one that I had been wanting to get to ever since Andrew and I had a chat about books and authoring and booktube, and I heard more about the story that he had written here and its influence from Egyptian mythology, which is something that I have loved since I was a kid. I love Egyptian mythology and I find it fascinating. And I always get excited when I hear that somebody has brought that in as inspiration for a fantasy novel. So this is the story of several protagonists. It's a multi-POV story where we follow a young girl who kind of re represents this coming of age in a very harsh culture. She's a street urchin who's trying to take care of her very sick mother and she gets in trouble and it throws her into the path of an experience that leaves her quite changed. And on the opposite side we have the POV of Rai who is a kind of established warrior who has already been through a similar experience to the one that Naya, our other protagonist, has been through, and he is trying to find answers about this very new and very terrifying magic that he is now tied to. I love the culture and world building in this story so much, and Andrew Watson does a really good job of kind of pulling in concepts to this story and making it really fresh and interesting. The characters were kind of hit or miss for me throughout the story. I really liked, I think Rai was probably my favorite of the protagonists um, because I really liked him and his, especially his relationship with his sidekick character, which I don't really want to spoil too much about. Just read the book and you'll know what I'm talking about. Um, I'm really interested to see where he goes next in this series because he's really leaning into that kind of Egyptian deities and mythology, especially when it comes to the magic system, and I am here for that 150%. I did struggle a little bit with some of the character motives when it came to the antagonist, but overall I found that this was a pretty solid indie debut, and I'm looking forward to seeing what else Andrew Watson chooses to do with the world that he's building here. Next up, I read the ninth out of ten Spiffbo finalists, and that is The Last Fang of God by Ryan Kirk. This one 
we're taking a little bit of a step away from the Slavic inspired fantasy and we're moving back a little bit more towards the Nordic side of things. The Last Fang of God is about a father and daughter pair who are bound to their kind of demigod um, in a pantheon of demigods that each gives their followers a certain gift or strength. And this father and daughter pair have been chosen by a wolf demigod. Now, this one was really interesting, and the, the world building and the magic system was fairly simplistic. I actually really liked the kind of stripped-down elemental beast-style magic system. I thought that was really, really cool. I liked the father character in this story a lot. The teenage daughter character was really where I started to have a little bit of problem with the story because she felt very one-note and very stereotypical teenage girl throughout most of the story and I found myself losing some of the immersion with the world and the magic system and the concepts that the author was giving me because of her angst level in the story. But that being said, I do think that there are a lot of things in this book that are incredibly just solid. I thought that it was a solid read. It's a pretty short fantasy novel, so if you're looking for something that is kind of elemental beast magic based, shorter read, palette cleanser style book, I definitely think that um, Last Fang of God has a lot to offer. Moving on with my journey through Spy X Family, which I don't know how to pronounce it, you guys. I Maybe I should just say Spy Family because I did get a comment on my last video that I, oh, you say the X in Spy X Family, and I was like, am I not supposed to? So anyways, um, Spy family, spy X family, families of spies, however you want to call it. I read volumes 9 and 10 in March and I continue to love this series. With a few minor complaints that I have mentioned in my Goodreads review, volume 9 followed a younger character in the series that is kind of a friend of our main young protagonist, Anya. And her name is Becky, and without saying much or spoiling too much, there's a few kind of ick factor things about this character and the way that she's being written that I just personally have kind of an uncomfortable reaction to. And so volume number nine was probably my least favorite of the ten that I've read so far. Thankfully, back in volume ten, we move away from that character and a lot of the things I dislike about her, and the author comes back to focus more on the family and the like relationship between Lord and your and their adopted daughter Anya, which is what I am here for. I am really nervous because I'm getting to the end of what exists in terms of the volumes that are currently available for this series, and that makes me a little nervous because I want to read the end of it, and we're not even halfway through the projected series yet, because I think there's supposed to be like 30 volumes or something close to that. Which is going to be great when it's all done, but I don't like waiting because I'm not a patient person. So anyways, still enjoying it um, with, like I said, the exception of a couple of a couple of things in the series that I'm just kind of like, okay, I could do without this kind of like weird relationship thing that's going on here with a couple of the characters. I'm not about it. But overall, really loving this, the dysfunctional family and the like very light thriller aspect of this. It's just very cute. And actually... I wanted to show you guys, I actually added a friend to my bookshelf. I don't know if it's going to focus on her, but this is your forger. She is my favorite character from the Spy Family manga. I love her to bits and pieces. She's amazing. She is a young woman trying to figure out how to be a mother. And also, by the way, she's a master assassin, which is just super cool. So she is awesome. And I added her to my shelf with my other characters from Rurouni Kenshin. Next up, I decided to go back. I needed a I needed a comfort read in March, so I decided to go back to a tried and true series that is one of my favorites of all time, and that is Morning Star, which is book 3 in the original Red Rising trilogy by Pierce Brown. This is one of my favorite science fiction fantasy books ever. I love it so much, and this is like the third or fourth time I've read it. And it didn't disappoint. It was exactly what I needed when I when I read it. This has one of my favorite scenes of all time in it with one of my with my favorite character of all time when it comes to science fiction and fantasy. 
And I love this series so much and I had committed to doing a reread before I continue on with the secondary series that is still ongoing and I will be reading Iron Gold very soon because getting back into this world and just... It really feels like going home. I love these characters so much. I love so many of the themes that Pierce Brown uses in Red Rising. And I know y'all are sick of me talking about it at this point, but get used to it because uh, there's going to be a lot more Red Rising content coming up as I continue the series. I still love it and I, I still get emotional <laughs> at the same parts every single time. So yeah, I am definitely looking forward to doing some more Red Rising content on the channel and talking more about the themes and the characters and moving on with the second half of the series. Next up was another book that I have been saying that I wanted to get to for a really long time and I'm so glad that I finally did and that is Bone Shroud by my friend Andrew D. Meredith. This is book two in his Collation Saga classic epic fantasy that really heavily delves into the themes of politics and religious orders and it is just you know there's so many books in the fantasy genre that delve into to themes of religion and society orders and all of that kind of stuff. And I feel like there aren't a lot of authors that delve quite as far into it as Andrew Meredith does. There's just a level of depth to his exploration of faith and the lack thereof and of, you know, pantheons and like just systems of order within society and religion and it is just fascinating to try to kind of peel back the layers of world building that exist in this series. If you are someone who really loves uh, classic fantasy vibes, that kind of epic struggle between good and evil, but you like a little bit of gray that a lot of the classics don't have, this series is definitely one that I would put on your TBR because I think that Andrew's doing a lot of things in this series that I have not seen done before in fantasy to the level that he's doing them, and I think it's definitely worth a read. In terms of moving forward in the series, I got more of the characters that I loved in book one. My favorite character is still my favorite character at the end of book two, and I don't know that, that I see that changing in the future, but there were a couple of other characters that really added a lot of depth in this story, and I actually liked them more in book two than I did in book one. Um, and then there's Dane who I hate just as much as I did in book one, if you know, you know. <laughs> um, but I'm really excited to get to Gloves of Eons, which is book three in the series, and hopefully get that done in time to catch up when book four comes out later this year, because I'm trying to keep up with more of these series. But this was one that I've had on my TBR for quite a long time, and I was really glad to finally be able to cross it off my list. The last book that I read in March was I needed to take a little bit of a trip away from fantasy. I needed something completely different, and I was trying to pick back up an audiobook as I've been trying slowly to get myself used to audiobooking and learn how to focus on audiobooks. And I've discovered, as I've mentioned before, that memoirs are a really good option for me in that sphere of reading. And so I picked up I'm Glad My Mom Died by Jeanette McCurdy. I grew up in the 90s and early 2000s, right during the time when Nickelodeon and all of those kids' networks were huge. They were huge when I was young. This is something that actually not a lot of people know about me, but when I was a teenager, I actually auditioned um, for a company that was looking for girls to join the Lizzie McGuire show. Um, my parents and I decided after going through the audition process and finding more about the contracts and how much control the executives of that company would have had over my life and my acting career um, that they were not comfortable with that. And in hindsight, I'm really, really glad <laughs> because the more that I learn about a lot of what was going on um, on those networks at the time, the more I'm so glad that I dodged whatever bullet that was because I'm not saying that it's all bad, right? And I don't think Jeanette is either. But the things that Jeanette went through and that, that chase of celebrity and fame that she went through with her mother and being forced into a lifestyle that she didn't really want and wasn't comfortable with um, at the expense of her childhood was really 
sobering to read and I think it pulls back the curtain on a lot of the experiences that children in the spotlight of fame have, unfortunately. And I'm really, really glad that Jeanette was brave enough to express her experience and share it with the world. I think it's a really well-written memoir and hearing her read her own story is something that I have always really liked about memoirs. I really like being able to hear it in the author's own words and yeah, it was a really solid memoir. So highly recommend if you're looking for this kind of category of memoir. I think that um, it has a lot of really important information that especially for those of us who grew up during that time period and for a lot of people I wasn't necessarily my kind of scene overall but a lot of the girls that I grew up with really idolized a lot of the actresses and characters from these shows and I think just knowing more about what some of these young actors went through is really important. So anyways, that is everything that I read in March of 2024, and um, yeah, sorry it's late, but at least better late than ever, and I hope that you guys had a really good reading month in March. Let me know what your book of the month was down in the comments below. I realize that's something I should probably be doing, I guess, at the end of these, so if I had to pick a book of the month, I think I'm actually going to say I'm Glad My Mom Died by Jeanette McCurdy, because I really, really was impacted by, I thought it was really well written, I thought it was a really impactful uh, memoir, and yeah, it was clearly uh, something that's really important, I think, for an entire generation of, of people who grew up in the same uh, era that I did. So I think that's going to be my pick for Book of the Month. I would love to know what yours was down in the comments below. I hope you are having an awesome week. I hope you're reading five-star reads, and I'll see you in the next video.